guys, welcome or welcome back. My name is Talia. I'm an artist and interior stylist in Los Angeles, and I help people affordably curate more beautiful and functional spaces. So about two months ago, I posted my review of my portable washer and dryer. I've owned them for about four years, so this was an in-depth review of all the pros and cons, tips and tricks, accessories I recommend, and in a later video, my 2021 apartments updates goal, I mentioned that one of the things that I wanted to do in my apartment this year was upgrade my twin basin manual washing machine to a newer automatic single basin machine. They take up a little less space. They're supposed to be a lot easier to use. And I was really looking forward to making the upgrade because I thought it would make my laundry process significantly easier. So at the top of the year, I decided to go ahead and make the purchase. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you about my impressions after using this device for about a month and a half and why I think that it's going to be the newer device that I actually put up for sale on Facebook Marketplace. I hope that this video will be helpful for anyone who is looking to purchase a portable washing machine, whether you're new to the game and unsure of which type of device to purchase, or if you're someone like me who had an older version of the device and are considering upgrading to a newer model. So let's jump right in with the pros of this new device. It's the main reason that I purchased it and it's that it's fully automatic. So when you start a load of wash in a standard washing machine, you put your clothes in, you put the soap in, you close the door and you walk away and the machine runs through the entire cycle, adding more water when needed, draining water out, spinning excess water from the clothes. And the only thing you need to do is take your clothes out at the end of the cycle to get the next load started. I've already discussed in my review that my older version of the machine is manual. So you have to monitor the level of water in the machine. You have to manually drain water out of the machine. And most taxing, you have to move the clothes from one basin, the washing basin, into the spinning basin to spin out excess water before you can move your clothes into the dryer. The newer machine is fully automatic, so just like a standard washing machine, the cycle runs completely through when you hit start. And so I've actually been able to start a load of wash, hop in the shower, run out of the house quickly to go do errands, and not have to worry about coming home to uh, one, finding, you know, a load of laundry just sitting there waiting for me. That now my day has slowed down because I wasn't there to manually move the wash along. Or worse yet, which has happened to me before, water all over the floor because I have forgotten to turn off the water from the tap. So the fully automatic nature of this device. It is extremely convenient. It definitely makes these newer devices more similar to a standard washing machine and that's a major pro in comparison to my older device. The second pro I noticed for the newer version of this washing machine is that you don't seem to need laundry bags to use it. In my older machine, laundry bags are a necessity for anything that has a long arm sleeve, a long pant leg, or anything with a hole because if you don't use a laundry bag, your clothes are gonna come out a tangled mess. That does not seem to be the case with the newer device. I've been able to wash everything. I don't think I've used a laundry bag with uh, any load of laundry with the new machine uh, and that includes delicates. You're not going to have that frustrating experience of having to unravel all of your, you know, leggings from one another, but that actually leads directly into the cons of this machine and unfortunately this is going to be a significantly longer list than the pros. So 
why don't you need laundry bags in this newer device? It's because the agitation power in comparison to my older machine is, is incomparable. Unfortunately, you can't have the lid on the new machine open so I could show you the agitation like I can with my older machine, but I will insert a clip so that you can hear the difference. going to show you that changing the program doesn't change the agitation or the strength. So this is what it sounds like standard. Let's go to pausing it and I'm going to go down to heavy duty to start. It changed the time so now it's 51. 51 minutes and BB is the wash cycle. But that agitation is the same. I pause it and we'll go to this now we're on the other side for the wash cycle. Time is 17 minutes. The only thing that changes when the program changes is the time of the wash, not the agitation or the intensity of the wash. By comparison, this is the uh, control panel on my older device and the wash select would be your option for the type of program and you only have normal and heavy. So heavy is the length of agitation in the clip that you just heard. It's about 12 seconds in each direction. And then the normal is about half of that. The rotation goes about six to seven seconds in each direction. And you know, maybe it's because I've gotten so used to using a really non-traditional washing machine and I'm just not used to like the standard agitation power of a washing machine. But in comparison to my older device, the three seconds in each direction doesn't really seem like it's, you know, doing the job. My clothes don't really feel like they're getting you know, battered against the rocks enough, as it were. Um, I haven't noticed a difference uh, in the cleanliness of my clothes, so maybe this is just like a, a nitpicky thing, but something in me feels like the stronger the agitation power, the better the cleaning power of the machine. I don't know. So the second major con I've noticed in the newer single basin automatic portable washing machine is that the drum size is significantly smaller in comparison to my older device. So the product listing for my original washing machine suggests a maximum laundry weight of 10 pounds and the newer device suggests a maximum weight of 12 pounds. And I think they list it that way because you have to take into account on the older machine that there's a separate spinner that your clothes have to go into before they can be put in the dryer. And that spinning section is significantly smaller than the wash basin that you're washing your clothes in. So on a standard um, load of towels, I'll typically have all of my towels in the wash basin but have to break that up into two to three batches in the spin basin and i have had it happen on one occasion that i had a weighted blanket that was able to fit into the wash basin of the device but was too large to fit into the spinner so i think it might be possible that the spinning basin of my older washing machine has that specific 10 pound limit because you know i haven't weighed my clothes out but I can fit way more clothes in the washing basin of my older machine than I can in the washing basin of the newer machine. The 
the size of this bin itself, the size of this container itself might be about the same size or a little bit bigger than this washing machine. It does come out a bit wider, but you also have to think that this bin is the entirety of this. It goes all the way back, all the way back. Whereas this one, it's just this part. So this seems like you're getting more space to wash your clothes, but you're actually getting less space. So the easiest solution to this problem would be, of course, to wash more loads and to just make them smaller. So on a standard Sunday, when I'm washing all of my sheets, my towels, and my clothes from the week, where that would take maybe five loads in my old device, we now might be talking six to seven loads in the newer device, which then gets into the question, is it more convenient for me to have the automated process of the new machine, but have to wash two to three more loads of laundry a day versus having to manually interact with the washing machine a lot more, but have to wash less loads. Which solution is the most efficient use of my time, of my energy, and of the water that I have to use also for this process? So the smaller drum size kind of leads into my third major issue that I've noticed with this device, which is the water level that the machine fills to when you set it and it automatically runs a cycle. Uh, the water level is not nearly as high as it needs to be to accommodate a load of laundry in the wash. And this I also noticed after I was purposely washing smaller loads in the device. When you set the machine to take in level four, the highest amount of water for your largest load of laundry, I don't feel the water comes up high enough to really give your clothes enough base to slosh around. But here's my problem with the automaticness of this washing machine. So the water can go a little higher, stopping down here, and it has this much space. But as you can see, my clothes are still, these are my sheets, they're not all submerged. And if I do have the option of manually adding more water to the wash, so once the cycle starts, you can just press and hold the water level button and you can add more water to the machine, which is what I've done pretty much for every load that I've washed in this machine, except for the ones that I've you know, gotten into the shower. It kind of takes away from a little bit of the automatic nature of the machine, right? I might not have to worry about coming back into my kitchen and finding, you know, the floor flooded because the sink overflowed, but I am still tied physically to the machine. At the start of every laundry cycle, if I know that I'm going to want to add more water into the machine because I don't think that the standard level the machine pulls in is enough to wash my clothes. So those cons were kind of like general. I feel like those are just standard issues you might have with using this device, especially if you are coming from using the twin basin manual models. Um, the next couple of cons I think might be more specific to me and my setup and how I specifically use the machine. So. First thing is that this machine is way harder to move around and to get set up. There are wheels on the back of it and you can tip it over and kind of push it like a, like a trash bin. The wheels are functional and when I am able to use them, they do make moving the machine a lot easier. But where I keep the machine in my kitchen is actually in the little corner behind my refrigerator. And so I actually have to pull the machine out going against the direction of the wheels before I can get it to clear the refrigerator before I can then pull it out from against the wall. So there's no time in that movement that I'm ever able to really get behind the washing machine to tip it back and make use of those wheels. 
and actually working against the direction of the wheels makes the machine incredibly difficult to move it's a very tedious process with my older device it's a lot lighter it's easier to pull across the floor and there's also two little um hooks that you can grab and i'm able to lift up the machine and just swing it around so for me in terms of setup and usage it's not a deal breaker necessarily but it's like doubling or maybe even tripling the setup time for the machine and it's kind of just like this is supposed to be something that's making my life easier and it's it's not in almost any any way so <laughs> Also don't care for the positioning of the drain hose and the extension cord. Again, this is nitpicky and just because I'm used to having the drain hose on the opposite side of my machine, but in the setup of my kitchen, having the drain and the power cord be on opposite sides would work a lot better both for storage and for when I'm actually using the device so it's just kind of another negative on top of a an ever-growing list so the last issue that I can think of in this kind of you know limited time that I've had with this new machine is that I can't figure out an easy way to drain excess water out of the bottom when you're done at the end of the day washing all your clothes before you put the machine away. In my original review I mentioned that when I'm done washing all of my clothes for the day I will put a pan on the floor and put the drain hose into that pan and then set the washing machine to drain so that all of the excess water that's kind of pulled up in the bottom of the machine can drain out without having to fight against gravity to get up the hose and into the sink and I do that first because the panda recommends that you do that um, and also because pooled water is not good pooled water will breed mosquitoes and fungus gnats which I have personally had a problem with getting fungus gnats in the bottom of my washing machine I have 50 plants in my house it's Sometimes there's fungus gnats, right? So being able to drain the excess water out of my machine is, is very, very important. And there's not a drain functionality on this new device. The washing machine drains water during the standard parts of the wash cycle, but there's no way for me at the end of the day when I'm done washing my clothes to say, okay, let's drain out all the excess. Um, I've tried just putting the hose into the basin on the floor and that gets out a, a little trickle of excess water, but I don't know if that's all that's in there. I do know that when my washing machine shipped, it came with a little notice that said your machine might have some water in it from being quality tested at the factory before it was put in its box. So to me, that means that, you know, water not only gets into this machine and stays in there, it's got some longevity if it can still be in the machine by the time you ship it to me, which means if it's just sitting around in my house getting used every week, water accumulating, accumulating, if you can't figure out a way to get the excess water out of the bottom of the machine, it's going to be a problem. I assumed there'd be a way for, you know, to catch it and time it so that you can, you know, have your hose on the floor at the specific time that the machine is actually draining excess water. Um, it might also be possible to set the machine to spin without any clothes in just to get excess water moving. I haven't tested that, but I don't feel like I don't feel like washing machines are supposed to you're not supposed to put the spin cycle on and have nothing in the machine, right? I mean I'm sure it's not dangerous, but it, doesn't seem like a smart idea for some reason. I don't know, but it's something that I'm definitely worried about. Making sure that I can, you know, drain and clean out any device in my house that has water in it. Washing machine, my humidifiers, anything. That's really important to me because I don't like bugs and I don't want to like give them 
breeding ground opportunities when I don't need to. <laughs> so the last con that I've noticed of this device is only kind of a minor con for me because I have a separate dryer that I can use to dry my clothes. But I know that some people who use the twin basin washing machine air dry their clothes after they extract excess water in the spinner. And I did mention in my original review that the spinning power of that device is really powerful and you can very easily air dry your clothes and get them bone dry in a few hours. The spinning power on the new machine, much like the agitation power, is um, I feel kind of lacking. So when I let the program go standard, whatever standard amount of spin to get excess water out that is done by the machine, my clothes are coming out at the end of that significantly more damp than they are coming out of the spinner of my old device. So that for me only relates to, you know, like maybe 10 extra minutes in the dryer. But if you're air drying your clothes, that might mean like an extra hour or so in having them air dry to bone dry. So definitely not a deal breaker either way, but it's just something to think about on top of a long list of negatives that I'm thinking about with this machine, right? <laughs> so what's the verdict? I don't really think that there's any question about um, which machine that I'm going to be getting rid of <laughs> after going through this video and, you know, the incredibly long list of cons that I have for the newer version of the device. And like I mentioned, I know that I have four years usage experience with the older device. I'm very obviously set in my ways. I've worked out a lot of kinks and issues with that machine and I've gotten, you know, very used to the manual process of using that device. In this video, I've listed, you know, quite a few negatives that I've experienced in my interactions with using this newer washing machine, but those experiences are subjective. It's not to say that this is a bad machine. I purchased this specific one because it is so highly rated on Amazon. There are thousands of people who have it and use it and are raving about it and loving it. And like I said, in general, the convenience of having that fully automatic cycle that set it and forget it where you can truly go and do other things in your house and not worry about flooding your kitchen or slowing down your laundry process because you're not there to manually move it on it's like it's really it's it's chef's kiss if, if it worked a little bit better in terms of the water level it, it would be perfect like a standard washing machine system that all being said to really fully appreciate the automatic nature of the newer device i would have to wash more batches of smaller loads of laundry which is probably gonna negate any of the time that I would have saved in having the process be automatic versus manual in the first place. And that is not even taking into account the fact that I am having to manually adjust the water level at the start of every cycle anyway. So add to that that it's significantly more difficult for me to move and get set up in my kitchen and that I think that there might be some longer term maintenance issues with not being able to get the water fully drained out. My verdict is that I'm going to be keeping my older device and selling the new washing machine. I'm going to be putting it up on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. My original device has not given me any major problems. I wasn't updating because it was broken. I just wanted something that I thought was going to be a little bit more convenient. Um, you live and you learn. I think also if my older device does eventually you know go the way of all flesh it is four years old after all um i probably will if i'm still in this apartment replace it with a similar twin basin device instead of you know having another go at 
the newer updated machines. If I move out of this apartment, I'm, you know, I might end up in a place that has a built-in washer and dryer and it, it won't be an issue, or I might be in a place where I can get a larger portable washer so that the drum size is larger and I can kind of like balance out this load size that I want to wash. But I think for now, for this space, for my needs right now, it's going to be my original twin basin washing machine. I'm sorry I ever doubted you. Please, for the love of God, don't die on me two days after I sell the new device on Facebook Marketplace because that is literally just my luck. And that is it for the comparison, guys. I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you surprised that I had so many issues with the newer machine? Do you think I'm making a good choice keeping a four-year-old appliance versus trying to make it work with a newer device? I would also love to know if you have any experience with portable washing machines or any other fun portable appliance that might be a good solution for other small space dwellers. Do leave your comments and thoughts down in the comments box below. They might be helpful to other people who are looking to make a purchase of one of these devices. If you've made it to this point in the video, you obviously enjoyed it. So why don't you go ahead and hit the like button and while you're down there, hit subscribe it's free and you'll be able to get notified when I post videos I talk about interior styling plants small space appliances and solutions decor and all that jazz Thank you guys so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful day stay safe and until next time bye